Yeah, good morning. This is Bang Bang Rail. Uh, just come back. I've been out for a walk. I walked about five mile. My course was lovely out there, you know. I mean, it was like, we're, we're, in, we're near Olivia. There's a big farm, yeah? And they got all the cattle out, you know. I mean, the big bulls and all, woo, all that. And it's like, it's lovely, man. When you're in prison, you forget about all these things, you know what I mean? Unbelievable, mate. So unbelievable, you know what I mean? It's like, I went to myself, God, this is so beautiful. And being in prison all those years, when I took, what, nearly 30 years, you know what I mean? You think, what have I missed? You know, like, even with your grandkids and all that, your kids walking down there, you know what I mean? It's crazy, man. And it's nice to be out of prison. I've been out of prison nearly nine years now, yeah? But you don't really appreciate it until you get up early in the morning. It's a beautiful morning, you know? You go down there, you know, look around, it's been peaceful. It's so peaceful and so nice, you know what I mean? And to think that I've been in prison all them years and missed all this year with my kids. Anyway, I was just thinking about I, when I used to live in Acton, you know, I live opposite to Acton Park. And through the park, there's a great big house in the corner, yeah? And uh, St. Connery, yeah? 007 James Bond, yeah, he used to live there, <laughs> you know what I mean? And when we were kids, we used to go down there and drive him mad, you know what I mean? And he had this dog called Harry, big house Asian. And um, he used to play golf, golf over the park, like practice golf, you know what I mean? It, all the balls and all that, and we used to nick all the balls and run away. And we got to like his dog, you know, his dog loved us, you know what I mean? <laughs> Always playing with dog playing the golf balls, you know, yeah. Anyway, so what we decided to do is jump over his, his, his garden wall. Beautiful garden there, you know, really, really nice. And get into his house, you know what I mean? Creep into his house, about three of us, my mates, you know, we're only young. Get in his house. Mate, we got in the house and it was empty, no one was there. The only thing was there was the dog Harry, yeah. He come up to wagging his tail. He knows us, you know, wagging his tail. Oh, all right, we're loving it, stroking it, killing it, you know what I mean? And we're walking around the house. We ain't going to take nothing to shit ourselves. <laughs> we're just walking around the house, looking at it, James Bond, all the pictures of all these film stars and everything, you know what I mean? And went into his bedroom. Fucking hell, and he had two shotguns. Two big shotguns. And we could make get out of the house. Call me gun patties and kill us, you know what I mean? So we got out of the house and jumped out of the window and all that and shut the window down. But no alarms or nothing could make it. And listen, it was an alarm and it was silent. But it was like, this is the early years. You're on about the 70s, you know what I mean? The early, early 60s, 70s, yeah? And anyway, but um, it was funny, you know what I mean? Seeing him over the park, you know, and then seeing him in films and all that. And and and, and, and his wife there, was, she was blonde, she was really pretty. And, you know, and I think he had a, he had his son, not quite sure. It's a long time ago, and it, and it, and it was, it was, a, it was a sort of going back all them years, yeah? And going back all them years, um, my mum had it really, really hard. My mum used to work three or four jobs. And she used to work for my Aunt Nell, yeah? My Aunt Nell had a shop in, in, in the, in, in the Vow Acton. Uh, tobacco shop, um, and, uh, Newspapers, not my mum used to go out, 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 out and clean it. Then my mum would go in the house and clean the house. Well, my my Nell, her son, was Adam Faith. You know, Adam Faith, the singer, Budgie, and you know, like his real name is Terry Nellums. He was my first cousin. My mum was his sister. My mum was his mum's sister, Nell 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 Nellums, yeah. And uh, Terry Nellums like. He started off in the Val Flats. I used to go there sometime, watch him with a with a with a tea with a tea chest and a broomstick in it, boom, 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 all that and singing. I never thought he'd make it, you know what I mean? But look at him, he he, he became a millionaire. So he died of an heart attack. Um his Roger Roger, his brother, was a light little fucker, mate. He was like terrible, you know what I mean? He was like a lot older than me. He was a right terrible, you know what I mean? Like my old mum, yeah, my old mum, uh, my old mum, it's like, not my quite back really, do you know what I mean? Because m my mum loved, loved the family, you know, and she loved Terry, you know, Terry and Adam Faith. But they never looked after my mum, you know what I mean? Never, ever looked after my mum. No, never give her nothing, you know what I mean? Even when the, the, like, Terry died and all that, my mum used to go around him uh, when he was a kid, look after him. She knew what I mean for that reason. But they never looked after my poor old mum, you know what I mean? And it's a bit heartbreaking, you know. Families that have got plenty of money don't 
he reminded you, yeah? And it was quite upsetting, you know what I mean, for, for me as a, as a child, you know? When I got bigger and older, you know what I mean? Anyway, my, my, I love my old mum, she had all them jobs, crazy. And it, it, I think, like, after me being sexually abused and all this, that and the other, and, and, and coming out and, and, and get, getting in, going in and, and realising what life is, you know what I mean? I, I, I just go over the fair, you know, when I was about nine, ten, eleven, go over the fair with my pals and all that and fuck about and get jobs on, on, on the rifle range with the corks and picking up all the corks and things like that. And my mum used to go mad because me, me being sexually abused as a child, she'd come over to the fair, you know, come on, come on, you got to come home and all that. And then I'd, then I'd climb out the window, go back down to the fair, stay there till one, two in the morning, you know, helping out, do all the cleaning, the rides and things like that, you know what I mean, for, for, for pocket money. My mum used to go mad. She has gone mad, you know what I mean? She knew I was to go over the window, but, that, you know, anyway. And uh, when I got a little bit older, like 13, 14, I was going down to the gym in, in, in Acton, uh, training regular, always try, doing the weights. I was a kid, doing the weights, um, bit of boxing, bit of bag there, punching the bag, this, that and the other. And then at the fair, come back, and I would go over the fair, and I was fighting men. I'd fight men in the in in the boxing booth. Do you know? Listen, believe me, mate. Fourteen, I'd fight men in the boxing booth for a fiver. You know what I mean? Or for ten pound if you lost this and lost that. Not for myself. Not the money for myself. You know. I'd just give it to my mum. You know what I mean? Listen, I didn't much care about getting bashed up. You know what I mean? That's part of life, isn't it? Getting bashed up. You know what I mean? But. It's it's nice when you can go home to your mum, all smash the pieces. <laughs> mum would go mad, bit your tail, bite it in, and all that. You know, go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, you know, it's ten pound, mum. You know, like ten pound is a lot of money. You know what I mean? In in them days, you know, it is a lot of money. It don't seem like nothing today, does it? What's ten pound? A pound. The ten pound. What's ten pound now? Is it, well, ten pound is, is is what? I don't even know myself now. You know what I mean? Ten pound. Look. It's a ten pound note, ten pound note. We've got ten pound notes now, but in them days it was worth a lot of money. Ten pound was like I don't know, maybe hundred pounds. You know what I mean today? And uh, 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 anyway, and then it all really stopped my life. Really started from from me being molested as a child and all that, but more so um, when I was to fight. You know, when I was to start fighting and with my mates, we was little fuckers going through the shop windows and nicking all bits and pieces. And being chased out the shops and all that, and it was like Johnny's mafia films, you see, like you know what I mean, The Godfather and all that. It's the same sort of thing, really. And uh, when we're kids, when we're growing up, kids, it's not like now. It's all different now, you know what I mean? It was all different. Like people used to trust people, believe it or not. People used to tie the key up and get it for the knocker and fight in the in, in in the letterbox and people like come to your house just pull the string out and, and let themselves in. You know what I mean? But today you couldn't do that today, like me and you joking. But in them days you could, you know what I mean? So we laugh and and the first car that I ever got was a Wolseley four forty four. So I couldn't drive I mean I couldn't really drive, you know what I mean? But I got it anyway. Cleaning it outside, outside. My mum would go, man, you can't drive that car anyway. What are you getting for? Uh, anyway, but I got the car cleaning it and all this, that and other. And the guy upstairs, he had a, um, a Vincent 1000 CC. You know what I mean? Fucking worth a lot of money today, you know? And uh, he took me on the back of it one day. And boy, since that day, I've never got on the back of my, my life. Fighting the life out of him, mate. So fast, you know what I mean? So always, boom, you know what I mean? And you sit in the back, you've got to lean over this way, lean over that I couldn't have that, no. You know, and then, and then, I mean, to keep going down the fair and fighting as, as a kid, you know, I, when, I mean, when I was at school, I went to, uh, um, like, Faraday, I went to Twyford, I went to Priory, you know, and, and I was always fighting. Always, you know what I mean? I just, like, Listen, I was winning, mate, lots of fights. Maybe if I had ten, I might win one. <laughs> Seriously, I might win maybe two or three, you know. But I, I was always fighting, always learning. And in the end, people are swaying you more than anything because they, they know that you're, you're a problem, you know what I mean? All 
school teachers knew I was a problem. And you know what was funny? My mum, you know, when, when I went to sort of like a, a senior school, I went to Twyford, yeah, Twyford in Acton. And my mum used to work there, yeah, work as a school dinner cleaner, just giving the school school dinners out, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like a white little sod. And I was petrified because my mum used to come to work and I used to be outside Mrs. Ma Miss Maunder's office, standing outside. My mum would go, oh, not again. I go, that's right, mum. No, it ain't the right way. You know, what is it, again? And all of a sudden, uh, they send me home, send a letter to my mum, but he's been suspended, so I was trying to try and get the letters for to come, you know. But obviously, my mum works at the school, so she'd find out anyway, you know what I mean? But I was always getting suspended. Fucking hell, man. Oh, what? Anyway, then, cut a lot of things out. And one day, I was over the park at the top of my road, yeah. And there was a big tennis, about four tennis courts together. And it was like, winter, winter time, all the tennis courts were out. I got all, all the nets were out. And I was running up and down, up and down. There was, there was a guy with a dog, walking about with a dog. And his name was George Whelan. And he came up to me and he said, um, what are you doing, mate? I said, oh, I'm just running up and down to a little bit of training. He said, what, what, what do you want to train? I said, well, you know, I like to keep myself pretty fit. I was about 14, 15, 16, maybe 15. And uh, and I started like, he said, do, do, he said, do you like boxing and all that? I said, yeah, I love boxing, you know what I mean? He said, look, I want, I want a gym called London Transport, yeah? Uh, come down here. And I, uh, I said, yeah. I, he said, "What do you live?" I said, "I live at Miller Road." He said, "Look, I just live down the, down the road here, along the road here." He said, "You know, if you want, I'll pick you up. I'll set you down here." And he, and I went, "Yeah, yeah, 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 love it." And he pulled, pulled up in the van. I jumped in the back of the van because there was one in the front. His brother jumped in the front, jumped in the back rather, took me to the boxing club, started boxing. And there's an old boy in there called Jock. He'd give out all the gloves, little old boy, tiny fella, you know what I mean? Uh, get in the showers, uh, 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 and this, that, and the other. And I, when I got in the gym, there was a guy called Jeff Tre Jeff Tresham. Uh, I, I forget the, the name of the, of the black, there was a black heavyweight there, yeah? What was his name? Guy something. Um, I bet he was like, very, very muscular, very big, thick shoulders, you know? And, um, and you could see when he was sparring around with other heavyweights, he was a bit near the mark, you know what I mean? He used to throw him around, punch him around, all that. And so I started uh, to learn to, learn to box. And um, I was down the, down the fair, always fighting, but it was a lot different when you're fighting as a kid. In schools and all this, that and the other, in, in, a, in a gymnasium, it's a bit more uh, professional and it's a bit more disciplined. You get disciplined to, to yourself, yeah? And I was getting really, really good, you know, I was getting good. George, you know, used to pick me up some Sunday mornings and we used to go over to uh, Gunsley Park, you know, and um, big boots on a pack on my back. I used to run around the park like two or three times, you know, and, and George, and, and they looked at me as if I was going to go a long, long way, you know. And, and then I started really getting strong and, uh, mate, they took me down to Pro Gym. I was going down at Avistock Hill, another lot, training down there as well. Uh, Bobby Neal loved me to death. Bobby Neal, he, like, he really loved me, Bobby Neal. He had, at that time, I think he had uh, Pat the Can. I think he had Pat the Can. I, I'm not quite sure if he had um, Billy Ed, but I know he had Pat the Can, yeah? And Pat the Can, um, very good fighter, Pat. I think it was middleweight, light middleweight, or something like that, was it? Very good fighter, mate, Pat. And anyway, and... Um, Never done, and I never sparred with Pat, never ever sparred with Pat at all, you know, and, and anyway, I got in there, and, uh, and he took me down to pro gym to learn, to learn more, and every Sunday morning, Saturday, Saturday, sometimes Saturdays, Saturday late afternoon, we used to go to, to Aristotle Hall, uh, but most Sundays, we'd go to Aristotle Hall, you know, and, and he had big high hopes for me, Jim, you know what I mean, I mean, uh, uh, do you know what is a punchy I am? You know, I mean, I don't know this book, but, um, Brian Wheeling, yeah, uh, George Wheeling, but it was George and Brian. Brian was a good pro, 
for him. George was a good prize as well, George the William, Brian William. Anyway, took me, went into something down the gym, and, and, and as I say, he had a big high hopes, and he loved me. There's a lot of people like me in that gym, you know what I mean? And uh, and I wasn't afraid of, 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 of sparring. I used to love, love to spar with people. Being down the pro gym, you can see how the pros train, you can see how the pros perform on the bag, on the pads, on the speed ball. Wasn't much good in the speed ball, but I tried. But on the, on the pads, on the bag, I was excellent, you know what I mean? Bang, bang, I could really hit the, hit the bag, you know what I mean? I was good on the bag. Bang, bang, I would put myself shoulders in, bop, bop, I was all my shoulders, hips and everything, you know, so I learned a lot, you know. Do loads of floor work, loads of floor work, floor work, floor work, floor work, floor work. And, uh, and, and then one day I went in there, and uh, I think Billy Ed was, was sparring with Joe Bugner, and, uh, but, you know, uh, and I thought, fucking hell. I mean, my mate, a, a guy called, um, okay, so, oh, sorry, mate, I'll just come back from the walk, old ears a bit punchy, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my mate, Fowl Magoo, um, one moment, one moment, one moment. Sorry, I apologise, yeah. Anyway, yeah, um, my mate Phil Magoo used to come down to gym with me sometimes. We used to do a little bit of punching together, and Phil was a big guy, mate. Big southpaw. Woof, woof. He had an open class uh, uh, ticket so he could fight wherever he wanted to fight as an amateur, anywhere. And I was intermediate, I think, I'm not quite sure. And, you know, we was getting, like, we was fighting quite regularly, you know what I mean? And we was, I was winning most of my fights, most of my fights. I lost a couple, um, but you know you got to lose a couple to learn a lot. You know what I mean? You can't keep winning, 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 and not learning. You know. So you know, it was an amateur. I lost a few, um, but um, Fowl, I don't think Fowl lost many fights. About eighteen stone, big traveller, gypsy, massive. Yeah. And uh, we used to get, get in our stock films and do a lot of spa, really a lot, you know, like eight rounds, five rounds, six rounds, eight rounds. And in the end, you know, it got so good that he, he had to, he'd roll to the floor, you know. I'm going to have to out the fucking ring, you know what I mean? And like, but I used to love it with him, you know what I mean? Love sparring with Fowl, you know, learnt a lot of being a southpaw. And then I got him with Billy Ed, Billy Ed. I think Billy was a southpaw too, Billy Ed was a southpaw. I got him with Bill, held my own. 16 ounce club, you know, get whacked a few times. So what? You know what I mean? Get whacked a few times. Big deal. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. Learn a lot. You know, Bill's to pull me on all the time. Bang! Learn me a lot, mate. Learn me a lot. Hurt me lots of times, yeah? And I remember I was sparring much with Bill, and I was learning all the time. You know, he's a southpaw, you know what I mean? So he's going to get my left hook. Bang! Mate, let me tell you something, right? I hit him. I hit him fucking hard one day, yeah. Wow, mate, I hit him hard one day. He was rock, mate. He was rocks, and he came into me and was in the, in the little clinch. He said, you little fucker, you hurt me, you know what I mean? And I thought, yeah, man, fucking hell. And it was 16 ounce gloves, yeah. But I respect you, Bill. Uh, Billy Eddie, he learnt me, uh, learnt me, learnt me so much at, at, at fighting, you know, boxing. And uh, and then and then I was going down there like the mess as possible. And then I see this guy called John L. Gardner. Good fighter, mate. Fit. Oh, what? He was so fit. I mean, you know, you get him on the bag. He'd be on the bag five, six, seven rounds. On the pads, five, six, seven rounds. Get in the sparring. Wasn't afraid of sparring. And kept going forward, throwing punches. Never spar with Bill. Never, I mean, never fired with uh, John or Gardner. Never, never ever fired with, with Gardner. Never sparred with him at all. But one day he was there, but, uh, Bugner. Everybody knew Bugner, you know what I mean? Big, big man, you know what I mean? Big, big, massive hands from bang like a mule. When he hit that bag, mate, you know, he hit that bag. See him on the pads. And a couple of times I got in, the, in, in with him, doing a bit of sparring. Learned me a lot. Hit me, hit me a lot, you know what I mean? Uh, hurt me, like, big time. Could hit, hit like a mule, 
But it's funny, you know, when you when when you're fighting, you know, when you've been fighting a long, long time and you're sparring, it seems like it don't. It seems it's crazy. Not that you like getting hit, but it doesn't really it doesn't really affect you that much. You know what I mean? Bang on, you know. And it was like getting hit on the face. It was not nice. Not very nice getting hit on the face, but it was like just. You know, like learning thing, and it wasn't so bad. And you think, yeah, yeah, I like to. It's nice to get hit and to and to learn, you know. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I, I learned hell of a lot, mate. I learned so much, you know what I mean. And being down at Beckett and all that, yeah. And then, um, like George, there was to come. Let me go by myself. And one day, uh, my mate Leslie McIntyre. I was told you about Black Cop. Black kid, good fighter, mate. Well, well, good fighter. He come down one day with me one morning, on Sunday morning. He said, "Look, why not? he said, look, go and down here, go and down, down the other one, as um, the uh, not the um, oh, George Francis gym, um, the Wellington, the Wellington Highgate, yeah, and with, uh, with George, uh, John Conti and all that the block, yeah. And I always go down there, there's in. I used to do a lot of sparring down there, a lot of sparring, um, a lot of bad work, good trainers." Joe, De Joe Devitt, was it Joe, Joe Devitt? There's a good trainers down there, mate. Anyway, and, 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 I, and I was getting going down there with Leslie all the time. Leslie turned pro. I was on the verge of whatever it was. Um, and one one Sunday morning, um, Mickey Duff, Georgie Francis, um, and I, I'm not quite sure, it was, it was uh, Jarvis Astaire, I'm not quite sure, but there was going to come around and see me. On a Sunday morning, and have a chat to me about returning pro. See me, silly as ourselves. Love the bird, young kid, good body, fighting. Birds love all that, they're shaking all the time, never stop shaking. So instead of me being there on a Sunday morning to meet them, I wasn't. I didn't get back to my house until late, or whatever it is, and the mum told me, not fucking Mr. Big, Mr. They ain't gonna fuck about with you, mate. They ain't playing games. They come a long way to talk to me. A long way to, to see if I got the turn pro. I wasn't there. They made arrangements. Fucked it up. Fucked it up. And what you do? Because you're shagging all these birds. You want, sh you want shagging money. You want money to take them out. You want money to spoil them. You want money to have a good time. And money to buy your own clothes. So what you do? Start writing robbery. Start doing robberies, mate. And I started not being, a, being an idiot. You know what I mean? And then got a job down the fruit market as a night porter, uh, earning good money, fighting crack all the time. Me, me and Colin on the cobbles, you know, fighting properly, uh, fighting on the cobbles in the market, in the fruit market, all the greengrocers there watching it in, in a circle. Me and him was fighting. I'm on about fighting. One bag glove, one, one, one bag glove, one from boxing glove, and there's only little twelve ounce gloves there. And fighting, you know what I mean, mate? And I was like 16, 15, 16, 14, 16, 17. And fighting like men, really putting it over, yeah? Colin would always bash me up. But I was learning, mate. I was learning. I thought, one day, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to bash you up, yeah? I will do you one day, you know? So I all the time bashing me up. I'm holding my own. And, uh, and, and, and we was all the time. And then, but there's a few guys in there that, um, well, there's a lot of guys in the food market that, I don't know what it was about the food market, um, but I would say 99% of people in the market that work in the market, salesmen, as well as porters, can have it. And a lot of them porters are ex-fighters. Boxing, judo, taekwondo, all them loads in there are all fighters. And a lot of the salesmen are all ex-fighters. So... The green guys say get away what they want to get away with, you know what I mean? And us porters, you know, got respect to each other. And, you know, there was a lot of porters in there who could really have it. You know, like, um, I mean, I've already told you before, but you've got Derek Pierce, you've got Martin Worsholds, you've got all the Wellses, you've got all the Collinses. Uh, mate, you've got all these potato people working on potato companies. You, all fighters, mate, big, big people. And can add it, you know. What I mean? You've been chucking potatoes about all day, big sacks of potatoes, hundred and twelve pound bags of like you've got your strength and power, you know what I mean? 
and I was fighting, as I say, Colin all the time on the cobbles, and it got to the stage I was, you know, I was, listen, I was getting a bit lively, mate, I'm down a, down to pro gyms, not so much then, it, but this is before I was going down to pro gyms, and then I was like, um, down, down, down at uh, uh, the transport, but then I went to the Beckett, listen mate, let me tell you something, I was a bit near the mark, you know what I mean, I was getting a bit, and then I got put away in prison, listen, let me end it there, and because there's got lots to talk about other things, I haven't really got into, um, me meeting a certain person and me moving on to gangsterism, enforcing and becoming um, a bit someone to record with, yeah. And it'll all come out later on in my in my podcast. And I want everybody to subscribe to me. I'm going to try and do. Um, I was tr uh, one of the guys uh, on my podcast come from America, and he was telling me that I was talking about. Um, leasing the motor or doing something like that, getting some more money together to, to, to get a car, hire a van or whatever. And he suggested that I do a live live podcast so people pay to talk to you. Well, it sounds like a good idea. If people are up for that, you've got to let me know um, because I, I, I would do that. I would do a live podcast so you can talk to me, ask me any questions about whatever you want to ask me about, you know what I mean? And uh, try not to be too, too over the top. Try not to get too flash and mug, try and mug me off. You can do, but I, I won't really um, bite, mate. I won't bite. I'm a bit too old and too for that. Uh, and um, I'm old school, yeah? So uh, please uh, love and respect me, mate. If you're going to do that, we will do a live. We will do a live one. So I'm going to sign off now. Thanks for listening to my podcast. Um, it's going to get, I'll be so coming. It's going to get bigger and better and better and better. I've got, I've got a big, got a massive, massive life, mate. You know what I mean? I've got to talk about... I can go on. I can go on and on and on about prison now until pancake day because I've done so much birds and met so many people, done so much in prison. But I will I'll tell you everything about what I've ever done. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my podcast. Please subscribe to me, like and subscribe, and um, and have a nice day. And don't get too sunburned. Have a nice day. <laughs>